Hi there, it's Pastor Reese, and we thank you so much for watching today. We know this message is going to be a blessing in your life. Enjoy. God is good, isn't he? And I want you to raise your faith, your expectation. So the first thing I want you to do is watch a meeting we had in Pakistan, a Muslim country, thank you, with over a million people. Isn't God cool? And so watch this because we're going to think big, believe big, and receive big. So put your hand on your heart. Say, I think big. I I believe big. I I receive big. 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 Amen. So watch this. No one may know your name, but Jesus knows your name. For Pastor Anwar, my son, <laughs> who puts me on television here, and all over the world, with Sarah. I said, I love Muslims, and Muslims love me. गवाही देती हूं ये देखें मेरी बेटी ये एक साल की होने वाली है और इसकी आंख का सारा ट्यूमर खत्म हो चुका है और खुदावन ने इसे जिंदगी दी है खुदावन ने इसे सेहत दी है और मैंने खुदावन से वादा किया था मैंने कहा खुदावन दा मुझे मुझे एक मौका दे दे कि तू मेरी बच्ची को शफा दे मैं नाच नाच के तेरी गवाही दूंगी और मैं नाच नाच के गवाही दूंगी That was a testimony where he began to see. You know, he was born with a blind eye, and God gave him a new eye. So those are the wonderful things. It's almost, to me, like God bends over to do the miraculous in these countries. And, of course, this is a Muslim country. Now, you have notes this morning? No, they're up above. Okay, so it's prayer, provision, and practice. So these three things I have found extremely effective in my life, still are. I still use them, and you will too. So put your hand on your heart. Say, God God wants me to pray. pray. God wants to provide for me. And God wants me to practice on people. (laughs) Because I always figure this out. What does God love the most? people. He loves people. And that touches me. Now, I began many years ago to memorize all the nations of the world and pray over them every day. 
And so I would take those nations. Now, those are the nations I go to. But it started with a process of praying. Everybody say praying. And I love the way our church loves nations and prays over nations. And we support missionaries. And certainly the ministry does. Because in February, I go to Saudi Arabia. And it's an imam who is a leader of a mosque who is really sponsoring the meeting. And it's on healing. And I'll have salvation. Come on. You know, folks, if you let me in the door, I'm really in. I really go for it. So I give you these three things. Pray as if your life depends on it. Folks, you have to have a prayer life. I don't care who you are. You can say, well, I'll call my friends and they'll pray. You need to pray. So point to yourself. Say, I need to pray. Now, for me, I have a prayer pattern. So when I get up in the morning, you know, this is what I say. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is your beloved Marilyn. Now you say, you are really arrogant. No, I'm not. Hold your Bible up if you can, or your phone. Say, in my Bible, I am called God's beloved over 60 times in the New Testament. So I say, good morning. This is your beloved and so if I know that I am his beloved, it does something to me in my prayer life. It's just very, very key. So Colossians 3, 1, and we're going to read it together. I'll count to three, and then you join me. One, two, three. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So, I believe that you need to start your day with prayer. You say, well, I end mine. Why can't you do both? Could you start and end with prayer? Amen. So, we don't initiate things. Well, I'm just going to go do this. But have you saturated it with prayer? So, I don't know how long I prayed over Pakistan before God opened the door for me to go there. And, you know, I, I plan to go again. You say, you're old. They love old women. <laughs> Muslims just love old women. It is the truth. And so I plan to go. You say, well, you're, you're pretty old. They like old women. Yes. So I will be very welcome. Now, in 1980, we came to Denver from Amarillo, Texas. We were assistant pastors. And we started a church here. So this church goes way back. And what did we start it with? Prayer meetings. And so we would have prayer meetings. And we had them in our home on a Friday night. Maybe we had 20 or 30 people. Most of them were young people. And then it began to grow. And then we had some crazy things happen in our church. You know, when you're young and inexperienced, Everybody comes to try you out. And so people would come that were just crazy. You say, well, what do you mean they were crazy? Well, we had a woman who came one Sunday morning who clucked like a chicken. What? That's the truth. You didn't know this church started with clucking, but it <laughs> did. And I remember this woman every now and then when Wally would say something that she liked, she'd go cluck. Instead of saying amen, she said cluck. And I remember I was so upset. God, do you have to send all the nuts to us? <laughs> but, you know, the Bible says strong meat, and this is Hebrews 5.14, belongs to them who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. The clucking of chi chickens <laughs> helped us to read the reality of God's spirit, because we tested things. Well, is clucking in the Bible? No, not really. And so we began to test things. So all of that came in God's process, and we, we really prayed. We prayed some people out. 
<laughs> we really prayed. We prayed some people in. And then it's interesting to me that if you get around people who pray, you will pray. Prayer is contagious. So put your hand on your heart. Say prayer, prayer. is contagious. And so, you know, I know this is kind of an unusual time, but I have some people who come to do service in my home, and so I ask them, would you mind if I prayed with you? And they kind of looked at me like straight, well, okay. I know they think that old lady, but they let me pray, and now they've gotten born again. So pray at home. Everybody say pray at home. And I got around people who like to pray. And getting around those people, they're contagious. And I believe we are contagious to each other this morning in prayer. So put your hand on your heart. Say, I'm contagious, I'm contagious. to the one next to me. I'm contagious to this church. I pray for this church. I love to pray. And prayer is powerful. Now, I, when I first got around Dr. Young Yi Cho, and I met him in kind of an unusual way, he told us he prayed four hours a day. Oh. And so I said, Lord, I need to be on his board. I don't pray four hours a day. If I pray 40 minutes, I think it's a lot. And, you know, he had never had a woman on his board, and he texted us, not text, but he wrote to us, and said, you know, would you pray about being on my board? I don't need to pray. Yes, it's the will of God. Now, why did I want to be on his board? Because at that time he had the biggest church in the world? No, because of his prayer life. Amen. And I began to catch it. You get around people who pray. We've got some wonderful people in this church who pray. And those of you who are here with our partner weekend, I already know you pray because I've already prayed with you. You're kind of crazy and radical. Now, another thing that is very important is you have to have vision. If you believe for nothing in particular, what do you get? Nothing, nothing in particular. And so believing for nations became a big thing for me. So praying over nations, memorizing the nations of the world and praying over them, things begin to happen. And you know, Africa, it has so many nations. And praying over those nations, God began to send me to Africa. And you say, well, they don't like women, but they like me. Muslims don't like women. Oh, they love me. They want me to come. And so, folks, don't limit God. Amen. Put your hand on your heart. Say, I don't want to limit God. I'm here to hear this message. I'm not going to limit God. And I have to have vision. In Jesus' name, vision for the lost. Amen. Okay. Then the vision in 2 Corinthians 3, 8, will not the ministry of the Spirit be more glorious? The ministry of the Holy Spirit is very glorious. And when we have the ministry and we pray in tongues, and I've prayed in tongues for a long, 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 long time since I was 24. I've been praying in tongues. Has it worked? Yes, it has worked. And I look at all the things that shouldn't have happened. You know, getting on television here, on Channel 9, you know, when I went in to see them and asked them for a program, he said, well, you're not television material. They said, you wouldn't pay your bill. And I said, God, you told me to do this. This is a vision. And one man's unsaved said, okay, we'll try it. And I'm on television, and they're not. All those years. Isn't God cool? Do you need the miraculous in your life? Is there something special you'd like to believe for this morning? That's why I'm here to believe for your something special. So put your hand on your heart. Just think for a moment of one miracle. Don't think of 10. Think of one. And pray with me. Say, Father, I'm believing 
for one special miracle. I believe you put that in my heart and it's going to come to pass. I speak it. I believe it. I have vision for it. Now, I put these scriptures here, John 14, 26. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. And, you know, folks, I, I forget sometimes, but the Holy Spirit is wonderful. And then I have Holy Spirit friends who remind me, too. So thank God for both people and the Holy Spirit. Amen? And he'll remind you of things. And maybe there are things he gave to you when you were just a child. You know, I can remember living in a little town in Texas and lying on the ground and looking up at airplanes and saying, someday I will be on an airplane. I was just a little girl. I almost live on airplanes. And so there are things God begins to give us. And it's the still, small voice of God. Amen. 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 And learning to hear that voice, that is really, really key and really wonderful. So without vision, there isn't provision. So the first time, you know, I was going overseas to do some major meetings, I did not have enough money. I needed $30,000, and I went anyway and said, God, I just believe you provide it. So I'm in Indonesia, and I haven't said anything to them. You know, I haven't asked for money in any way because I said, God, if this is of you, you'll provide it. So I lacked $30,000, and I'm going to Pakistan, and I don't have $30,000. And so I'm sitting in the lobby. Now, you say, you are crazy, Faith. You're right. If you say I'm crazy, Faith, I am. And so I'm sitting in the lobby, and I'm getting ready. I need this other $30,000. And a man, listen, this is the truth. Do you believe me? Put your hand on your heart. Say, you're not some crazy old lady. This is the truth. And so some man is sitting in the lobby, and he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to Pakistan, and, you know, I feel God wants me to go there. He said, uh, do you have all the money for it? I said, no, because I don't know this man. He said, what do you like? I said, 30000 He said, well, you don't now. He opened a briefcase and gave me $30,000. <laughs> Folks, I can go on and on and on about that. Because he gives vision and he gives provision with the vision. If your provision hasn't come yet, it's just not time. Amen? Amen. Now look at someone say, honey, this should be very encouraging to you. <laughs> okay. Now, the last thing here on your, the notes that you're seeing is you have to practice speaking the word to change your circumstances. And I have learned this through the years. You've got to speak what the word says. So I get up in the morning. I like coffee. I fix coffee. And then I start speaking promises that go with circumstances that I need. I speak them for children. I speak them for grandchildren. I speak them for ministry. I speak them for our nation. I speak them for our president. Yeah. Folks, don't gripe. Speak the promise. So look at someone to your right. Say, honey, don't gripe. It doesn't pay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, Job is quite a book, and I read through the Bible a couple of times a year. But Job 10, 12. Most of Job, you just think, oh, dear, so much whining. But it has some good things in it. It says, you gave me life and showed me kindness. And in your providence, you watched over my spirit. Folks, this has helped me many times. You gave me life because sometimes I go to meetings and I'm exhausted with jet lag. And you show me kindness. 
and you watch over my spirit because you could be discouraged when some of the things aren't coming to pass. I think especially right now, there's some things I want to do. Uh, it doesn't look like they're coming to pass. So I have to be careful that he watches over my spirit and that my spirit stays in faith. Stand up. And so I figured we'd exercise. Put your hand on your heart. Say, Father, Father I'm, here I'm here for a purpose. My spirit, my spirit has got to stay in faith, stay in faith. For, our for our nation, for the world, for, the world, for breakthrough, for, breakthrough, for turnaround. turnaround. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. It, has it has to be. You can be seated. Now, I've noticed when you get in the spirit and you're trusting in the spirit, God will bring circumstances that fit with the spirit. Amen. And he'll bring people that fit with the spirit. And sometimes they're not even people that you know. You know, I've had some people sit by me on an airplane, and after I got off, I thought they must be angels because they spoke such specific things to me. So do we live a supernatural life? Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Have I lived a supernatural life? You say it isn't for us. Too late. I've been in it too long. It, it is a supernatural life. So when you open your mouth, I put this in here, you're going to speak life or death. What are you speaking? Well, I don't like Colorado. It's too cold. Well, shut up. You're just blessed to be here. And so watch the things that you speak. Get up speaking positive things. Is that my grandson back there? Would you stand up? Would you turn around? All the way and look at me. God is bringing a turnaround and going to surprise you with some good things. And that will happen in 30 days. Amen. Okay. Now, how, <laughs> how do I get into Muslims, you know? You know, folks, I don't know how many years I have said, I love Muslims, and Muslims love me. I said it. Was it true? No. But I saw it begin to come to pass in grocery stores here because women would be there in black, you know, shopping, and they would come and lean on me and say, I don't know why I like you, but I just do. And when you begin to speak things, watch out. God begins to do things. And keep speaking it if it takes some time for it to happen. I mean, there are some things I want to do. And you say, well, you're old. I don't care. Old people do things too. Amen. And so I'm going to keep right in speaking them. And speaking God's word is a cornerstone in my life. I wouldn't think of not speaking the word every day. I would miss the miraculous. Oh, my goodness. Stand up. Oh, you say the exercise always. Say, I wouldn't think of not speaking the word every day. Every day. I must have the miraculous every day. Okay, you can be seated. Now, if I went through, and you can go through my book, the miraculous thing is not over until you win, I would tell you that every miraculous thing in the, that book is from speaking the word. It started early. I got into the word when I was very young, like 11 years old. It wasn't that we were taught that. I just had a desire. I feel like most of you here have a desire for the word. Is that true? Put your hand on your heart. Say, I have a desire for the word. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask some of you to be really honest. How many 
of you would say, I don't have a desire? Would you raise your hand? I don't have a desire for the word because I'd like to pray for you because you better watch out. <laughs> Is that you? Okay. If you don't have a desire for the word, be honest. Speak out level. Stand up. Act like I'm your great-grandmother. <laughs> I don't have a desire for the word. Or just put your hand up. Okay. So, Father, I just pray for every person who is just so honest this morning. They don't have a desire for the word. That in this service, they receive a desire for the word. That's more than their desire for natural food. They think in the morning, where's my Bible? They don't just think coffee first. They think Bible. Where's the Bible? I need the word for today because I need the supernatural for today. And folks, we all do. We need every day to be a miracle. We need our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren to be miraculous. We need to believe for that. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to have you stand up again. I love it. And I'm going to have you turn around. Now look at me. Look at me. Say, I believe. I believe. Hearing the word today, the word today. Is, bringing is bringing a miraculous turnaround in my life. I am receiving. I'm receiving. I'm not just going to church. I'm getting a miracle turnaround. And it's on the inside, and it will come on the outside. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you can be seated, and I want you to close your eyes. Just be seated and close your eyes. Now, maybe... You're here today, and I don't know, somebody may have drugged you here, <laughs> pushed you to come, and you're just not sure your heart is right with God. Maybe, maybe you used to really serve God, but, but you haven't been. You've just kind of been cold, and somebody got you here today. This is a good day, really good day, to read knew your commitment to Jesus. Maybe you're here and somebody brought you. You don't know if you ever really received Jesus. And this could be, oh, the greatest day of your life. How many of you here would say you are positive Jesus is in your heart and you're up to date? Raise your hands. You're not slopping around. <laughs> okay. Thank you. How many of you would say, I'm not sure? I'm just not sure where I am with God. Would you put your hand up real high? I'm not sure where I am with God. I see that. Now, this is what I want you to do. And I'm going to ask Pastor Reese, Reese if he'll come up here. If you raised your hand, I want you. Can you stand right here, Reese? In front of me? Okay, good. Okay, if you raised your hand, would you come out and just let Pastor Reese pray with you? You raised your hand. We're going to clap for you. Come on and come forward. That's it. Come on. That's good. That's good. That's, good. That's so good. And if you're watching online, whenever this is, it might not be Sunday morning, we have literally hundreds of people watch after the service is over. We want you to know that your prayer is just as effective. And if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. And so let's all pray together. And uh, just extend your hands towards our friend here. Uh, it takes a lot of courage to come up here, by the way. And yes, And know that does. God has, you took a big step, so God is a big victory. So let's say this together. Say, dear Jesus. Jesus. We confess our brokenness. We confess our brokenness. We want to change. We want to change. But we need help. We, yes. need, we need a miracle, Father. Yes. So come into our hearts. Change our souls. Cleanse our spirits. Help us to, to recommit and to connect with you. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm so good for you. You know, uh, I want you to know we have a whole team of people here for you. It's not just me. we got great people here. And so one of our, our staff is going to come talk to you here in a few minutes after the service. But just know that we're here for you. We want to pray with you because we believe a really big change is coming into your life. And it's a change for the better. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Reese, Pastor Eliphaz, Reese, if you could. Reese, I have something else. Okay. Well, then Good. speak it. I would never squelch the spirit. Well, I might, but not with Marilyn because she hits me later. But... <laughs> Do I love my son-in-law? Like a son, you're right. I want you to take the hand of the person beside you. Is that okay if they do that? That's good. And if, if just we also have sanitizers outside if you want to afterwards. <laughs> okay. So just be aware of that. Because I want to pray for healing. That's good. Then pray so for healing. I want you to pray. Say, Father, Father in Jesus' name, in Jesus I, send I send the word into this one beside me. The word heals them delivers them from every destruction. From this day, they are healthy. Not just healed, but health. And thank you, Father. As their days are, so shall their strength be. God, thank you for blessing our nation and sending revival into the United States. Big time, Big time, biggest revival Big time. we've ever had. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for watching today. We pray that this message was a blessing to you and your family. Yeah, we invite you to watch us again on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you haven't yet liked our Facebook page or are subscribing to our YouTube channel, uh, please do so now. God bless you and your family. We look forward to connecting with you again soon.